Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 37 of the Ask the Coach show. I'm Jeff Plum, and with me, as always, is Alois Rosario. Welcome, Alois. Morning, Jeff. How are you this morning? Friday, Friday morning for us. Indeed, yes, I'm very good, thank you. Um, it's um, yeah, nearly the weekend, so I guess everybody's happy. Uh, well, in Australia, it's nearly the weekend. Um, we've got a great show again, Alois. Um, yesterday's Pink Steelers question was an interesting one. We asked what percentage of your serves are short and what percentage of your serves are long. Um, do you want to have a, tell us what, what you used to do? Yeah, well, um, when I played, it was probably 80 or 90% short, um, but that, that suited my game because I, um, I wasn't very good at blocking, so I needed to keep my opponent away from attacking. So, um, so that's what I used to do. But I think it, it changes a bit for everyone. Um, you know, like probably in general, you know, 70 or 80 percent short is good uh, because that enables you a little bit more to uh, to make the first attack. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I um I was probably the same. You know, 80 to 90 percent short. I like to try and get in with my forehand top spin. Um, but we've had some interesting discussions and. On our blog and, and in the Ask the Coach, we've seen sometimes that um, at the before players get to a really high level where they've got a great forehand topspin against anything long, that the long serves seem to be quite effective. So should people be using long serves more as they're rising up through the ranks? Yeah, yeah, we see that at club level, don't we, a lot. Um, because if your opponent doesn't have a really strong attack, then it's okay to be able to to serve the ball long and sharp because you can actually generate a bit more spin when, you, um, when you're serving that ball long and fast. Um, and it can really trouble uh, your opponent if they haven't got a really strong attack. So, so you know, at that level, like, it's it's very effective. But yes. if you yeah, sorry, but I was going to say, Alice, it is very effective, but I still think people need to be developing that short serve so they can use it. And also, when you do have a really good short serve, your longer serve actually becomes more effective because now your opponent's got to be ready to step in and also step back. If you're serving all those serves long, um, then they're just in one position. So even if they're having trouble with it, it's still easier. So. Even if you are serving a lot short, by having a really good short serve, it's going to improve your long serve. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, yeah, that's really good advice there, Jeff. I think um, so. That uh, definitely, if you're looking long term, long term, um, you need to think about short serves. Excellent. Very good. Like your use of words there, Alex. So today, the ping skillers question is. Could your club survive without its volunteers? Um, and if you want to give a shout out in the comment to any volunteers, go ahead. Um, so we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. All right, so first up, Alois, um, we've got an equipment question, and it comes from Jared. And Jared says, is it okay to use ordinary varnish like plastic varnish or wood varnish on your bat, and what benefits does it give? Uh, yeah, so um, so Jared there is talking about um, just putting the varnish on your blade. So before you put the rubber on, um, sealing the the wood with some varnish. Um, that it's okay to do, um, but I don't think it's so necessary anymore. Um, players did it a lot uh, when we were using speed glue, and and you were constantly taking your rubber off and and gluing it back on again. So just that constant on and off with the rubber used to tend to um, splinter, splinter your blade. So um, that's why most people used to use that that wood varnish um, on your blade. Um, they used to use just a just a normal wood varnish, um, you know, something that you'd seal um, some wood at home with, um, and it was it was effective. But now I don't think it's really necessary. So yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't bother with it. Yeah, as long as you're careful, I guess, when you're taking your rubber off again, don't just kind of rip it, then the, the blades are pretty good, aren't they? And you shouldn't do too much damage if, if, as long as you're careful. Yeah, and um, I find if you if you just work your way around, so if you start at one one corner and just work your way around and slowly, slowly peel it back, um, 
and just just keep keep an eye um, underneath the sponge to just make sure that you're not lifting any wood um, wood off as you as you're peeling it off. But yeah, it usually comes off pretty easily. Okay, hope that helps you out, Jared. Um, next up is a question from Dan, and Dan says, I often get into a position whereby my opponent has made a mistake and returned the ball high, or very high, and sometimes short, but with backspin. And I feel like I ought to be able to just smash this away. It should be an easy kill, but I always seem to put the ball in the net. Um, what should I do? Yeah, we see this a lot. And, you know, like it's frustrating for the player. Oh, when I'm standing there as a coach, it frustrates me too because it looks like such an easy shot. Um, this often happens because players serve long and fast with a bit of top spin. And, you know, as you start to develop your, your better serves and you serve it fast with, with a good top spin and your opponent doesn't read it and they just push the ball back like that and it goes up really high, because you've put top spin on it and they've pushed the ball, it comes back to you with a lot of backspin. Now, it goes up high, it goes short, close to the net, and the first thing that people do is they come in there and they go bang and try and hit, hit, the, smash the ball flat. What happens there? The ball's got so much backspin, even though it's close to the net, it dives straight down and uh, onto their own side. So you need to still remember that there's a lot of backspin on that ball. So do a couple of things. One, open the angle of your racket up a little bit or a, a lot to allow for the backspin. So then the backspin doesn't dive straight down. It's going forward a bit more. So you can open your racket up and still allow for that backspin by perhaps just brushing the ball a little bit on contact. Just because that ball is up high doesn't mean that you have to hit the ball hard. So, so still think about placing the ball. You know, if you're not quite in a good position, don't don't smash it. Just just place the ball well, um, even though it is up high. So, gee, I see this a lot, and it, it is frustrating. It really is. <laughs> Indeed, and and we have done a video on this, Alice. So I'll put a, a link to that in uh, in the comments and the notes on this show. Um, but yeah, Dan, just make sure, you know, get into a good position, allow for that backspin, and don't think it's an easy shot, you know, make sure you concentrate and you'll execute that shot a lot better with those tips from Alloy. So, all right, good luck, Dan. Okay, um, next we have a question from, now this is going to trick me, Alois, but I think it's um, Ubi Adiaram. Maybe that's his name. Sorry, I'll try and get that better. We'll get Alois to have a go as well. Um, but the question is, do you lose a point when the server's racket touches the table on the serve? I believe that is not allowed for the paddle to touch the table when serving. However, it's allowed at other times. That's what um, Ubiad Daram thinks. Can you please clarify? Um, yes, Jeff. Uh, so with, with, uh, with that question from our ping skiller, um, <laughs> the... The racket is actually allowed to touch the table at any time. So whether whether you're serving or in the rally, the racket is allowed to touch the table. So anything, any part of your body is allowed to touch the table except for your free hand. So if you're a left-hander, your right hand's not allowed to touch the table and vice versa. So, so you are allowed to touch the table with your racket, with your elbow, with your head, whatever it is, um, as long as your free hand doesn't touch the table. So. Mm, interesting, Alice. And I think the other point there is that you're not allowed to move the table, so you can touch it, but you can't move it. Um, but then one thing that uh, interests me here, Alice, is if if the player's racket touches the serve, uh, so touches the table, is there a chance that they've hit the ball in front of the service line, and is that allowed? Um, yeah. So you're not allowed to to um, go over that service line to to hit the ball, but most of the time it's the racket touches the table on the follow through, so it comes through and touches the table then. So usually that's okay. So okay. Yeah, as long, yeah, as long as you're not contacting the ball over the, over the table. Okay, so you can't contact the ball over the table, um, but if you do hit it and your bat follows through and touches the table, perfectly fine. Thanks, Ubi Adaram, for the question. Okay. Now we've got a question from Koshin, and Koshin says, 
I'm pretty short. So can you suggest me, suggest to me some serves which are good for me and some effective spin serves because I'm not able to do good serves because of my height. Yeah, so uh, Koshin, probably the the easiest serve, especially well for, for younger players and, and juniors growing up, is the tomahawk serve because you're actually at a good height to do that. Taller players, when they try to do the tomahawk, really have to get down nice and low um, to get that action with their bat because when you do that, the bat goes up a lot higher. So, so that is a really good serve if you're shorter. Um, the, the pendulum serve can be really difficult. So if you're down here and trying to get up over the table surface, the pendulum, the pendulum serve can be really awkward, but give the tomahawk serve a go. It's a good one. Yes. And the Tomahawk serve is making a bit of a comeback. A few players are using it uh, effectively. So, yeah, get out, try that Koshin. Uh, we'll put a link in here to some of the videos we have on the Tomahawk serve for you so you can try them out. Um, and I'm sure that if you practice them a lot, you'll get some good effects and get some good results using it. Thanks again for the question. Well, Alois, um, that wraps up another week of Ask the Coach shows. Um, if anyone's got any feedback, uh, let us know, send us an email, contact us, or you know, put a comment in the blog. We'd love to hear your thoughts about the show. If you haven't, go to our website, pingskills.com, sign up for our free newsletter, and everybody have a great weekend. Thank you, Alois. Yeah, thanks, Jeff, yes. So weekend is usually prime time for table tennis, so um, hope you get lots of it. See you next week.